I'm Dan Costa, Editor-in-Chief of PCMag.com, here on the show floor at MWC 2020, and we have been filming in the Ookla booth, and I have the CEO of Ookla with me here, Doug Suttles. Doug, thanks so much for having us, uh, letting us shoot in your booth. Uh, my pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, our pleasure as well. It's been a great week so far. Uh, I want to explain to people what Ookla is, how it works, what it does. Most people will know of it as speedtest.net, right? That's correct. So what does, uh, what does speedtest.net do? Well, let's, let's call it speed test. Okay, it's just speed and test. That, uh, I think of speed test as a platform. It's, uh, it's a way to test your internet connectivity anywhere in the world at any time on your mobile device. Uh, you know, we have the website speedtest.net, which is where it all began. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, uh, you know, you know, you're trapped in a web browser, so there's limited things you can do, but we can measure so much more and so much more accurately by doing it on a phone or on a computer with one of our native applications. But it, measures in full the capabilities of your broadband connection. And it's so there you've got apps, it's available also all over the world. Um, so you've got this incredible pool of data that really is like a snapshot. Every day you take snapshots of what the state of the internet all across the globe. Um, what is the, what, you know, how, how is the US doing in comparison to other countries? It's doing fair, I would say. So a grade, know. a C? A C is a good, a good grade for that, but you know, the, the, I'll caveat it though. You know, the U.S. is like the size of Europe, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of uh, a lot of rural areas that, you know, there, there's a financial component, there's a density of population component that, you know, skews the U.S. a bit. So you know, you got to you know, you got to give it that. Yeah. But with that said, a C, maybe a little higher in fixed broadband though. Let's say mobile is a C right now. Fixed broadband is probably more like a B. And it's uh, a lot of it is the geography. We do pretty well in the cities, oh, yeah. but then there's this huge middle of America that's that's expensive to wire, yeah. and there's not a lot of financial incentives for doing so, and therefore they suffer with slower speeds generally. That's exactly right. The um, is part of the problem too that there's not enough broadband competition in the U.S. Because I mean we go back to the days of dial-up where there were five, ten different dial-up providers. The connections were slow, but there were lots of providers. Um, now, for broadband, I think it's like 43% of the country only has one broadband provider to choose from. Um, do we, is, there a is there a competition problem that needs to be solved? Perhaps, <laughs> but I think that it'll, it'll get solved on its own. You know, I think that in the next few years, wireless connectivity is going to compete directly with wired connectivity. And in that space, there isn't the same kind of regulation. You suddenly have a ton of new competitors It'll start small, start in the uh, you know smaller municipalities, but that's going to be game changing, and that's why you see the likes of, you know the large incumbents delivering gigabit because you know gigabit wireless is coming, you know, and you've got to be able to compete with what's coming. What do you what are your thoughts on municipal broadband and municipal Wi-Fi as an alternative to the private options? Um, it, it seems like an idea that keeps coming back every couple of years, but yeah. never quite takes off. Hard one to implement. You know, it's hard to justify tax dollars to do things like this. Um, I'm trying to remember the city. I didn't prep for this. So there's a there's one implementation that I love where they basically use municipal fiber to also be the mechanism to measure all uh, all of the uh, the power usage mm -hmm. and the power grid. So if there's an outage. They instantly know where and how to fix it. Mm -hmm. And they never have to send people around to check your your meter on your house to see how much power you've used. So they've saved a ton of money on the power side by implementing a municipal fiber network. The uh, one of the other technologies that everybody's really excited about is 5G, um, and the promises. And th at MWC, you can't not talk about 5G. Um, you've been going to a lot of these. 5G has been the topic of conversation for at least the last five years and not really, not much is shipped as of yet, uh, but we have standards, so, so how is that going to change the landscape? Um, you know, I rewind to when the same exact thing happened with what they called 4G. And, uh, you know, it'll come about. There, there's going to be a lot of players in the market that are going to start using 5G or 5G related terms to, you know, as, for, for marketing purposes. Um, I used to love everything that people would call 4G back in the day, we would call it 4G. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's good to have this target, it's good to have this thing, you know, a number to hit, um, a technology to present as such, to push the industry. Mm -hmm. Then everyone has, you know, a bar to hit. But 
you know, it's, it's kind of the same. I see speeds getting faster everywhere all the time, so that's, that's a good thing. So one of the reasons that, that speed test is so popular and people download the app and people constantly check the speed of their connection is because I think that everybody sort of suspects that they're not getting what they're paying for. Um, and you've have, you have access to all the data. Yeah. Do people generally get what they pay for and, and, if, and, and when don't they? I think the general answer to that is yes. You know, my view on this is users of our platform often, you know, experience an issue with the internet. It's usually an application they're running. Maybe they're watching a YouTube video, it stutters. Um, our app is the first thing they go to to see if it's their connection itself. More often than not, that is absolutely not the case. And, you know, our goal here is is to evolve our product to help them further troubleshoot. You know, we can help them see which apps are really having issues now while the connection is fine. Yeah, because it, I mean, the, and it, that's the frustrating part too, is that people run it, they'll find out their connection's fine, and then they have to realize that there's, it's actually interference from some other smart device in the house, or too many systems on the wireless network, or the wireless network's getting interference from their neighbor's wireless network. Um, that's where a lot of the complication happens and a lot of the slowdowns. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like speed test is working on Ookla's working on those solutions coming forward. Yeah, we're probably innovating now more than ever. We have a lot of fun things coming out this year that'll uh, look game changing. So uh, people obviously can go to the app stores and download the uh, download the apps. They can go to the web and run tests. But how can they follow what Ookla's doing and and really take a peek at all the great data that you guys collect? Yeah, I mean we have uh, we have a blog. We're getting a little, a lot more active on social media these days. We put out a lot of articles that are, that give insights into our data and the things that we see. You know, we um, we also put out market reports to really showcase, in you know, much detail, our view of an entire country, and then drill into a lot of cities within there. So, you know. cool. Yeah. Well, Doug, thanks so much for having us in the booth, and uh, I hope you have a great rest of the NWC. My pleasure. For more MWC coverage, you can go to PCMag.com. And for more Ookla coverage, obviously, you can go to Ookla.com as well. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dan Costa, Editor-in-Chief of PCMag.com.